Hello, my wonderful students. It's nice to meet you on this learning platform once again. Uh, I want you to get settled and get ready for this class. Get your writing materials, that is your notebook and your pen, and make sure that you do away with all forms of distractions so that you can learn something new today. Okay? Alright. The topic before us today is a continuation of the previous topic we had last week, I will be looking at punctuation marks part 3. Alright? At the end of this lesson, we should be able to state the symbol of the punctuation marks that we will be studying. You should be able to state the uses of the punctuation marks and you should be able to use those punctuation marks appropriately in sentences. Okay? Let's move on now. The punctuation marks before us today, we'll be looking at two punctuation marks, that is the colon and the semicolon. Alright? Yes, let's look at the first one, the colon. The colon is a punctuation mark consisting of two equally sized dots centered on the same vertical line. I believe you must have been seeing this. Two what equally sized dots centered on the same vertical line. The colon indicates a break between two main clauses, which is stronger than a comma, but weaker than a full stop. This is the symbol of the colon. You can see it here. Two equally sized dots placed on a vertical line. Okay? It is mostly commonly used to introduce a list but it can also introduce words, phrases, or entire clauses that complete the meaning of the clause that came before it. Okay? So most times it is used to introduce lists, most times, and also introduce words and phrases. Alright? Now let's look at the usage of the colon. What do we use the colon for? What is it used for? There are different ways you can use the colon. The first one, you can use a colon to introduce a list. You can use a colon in front of an explanation or a reason. You can use a colon after introduction three headings. You can also use colon between two main clauses that are connected. You can use colon in front of the second part of a book title. You can use a colon to introduce direct speech. And lastly, you can use a colon to introduce other texts. We're going to look at all these usages one after the other. Number one, using colon to introduce a list. A colon can be used to introduce a list like we have said earlier. For example, I use three colors. You can see our colon introducing what a list now. Green blue and pink i used three colors you cannot just ignore the use of the colon right here it just has to be there all right look at another example make sure you wear clothes made from natural fibers make sure you wear clothes made from natural fibers cotton silk and wool you can see our colon right here Okay, that's the first use of the colon, using it to introduce a list. Now number two, using colon in front of an explanation or a reason. In front of what? An explanation or a reason. Now, this usage of a colon has to do with placing it after a statement. After a what? A statement. And before an explanation. Of the statement yes after a colon or before the explanation of the statement for example nevertheless the main problem remained that is the statement right now we said placing it after the statement so we have our colon immediately after the statement to explain that statement what should be done with the two men nevertheless the main problem remained what should be done with the two men all right. What should be done with the two men is an explanation of 
this statement that is the main problem that remained is what has to do with what should be done with the two men i decided against going away this weekend that is the statement and we have our colon right here in front of the statement all right and then we have the explanation the weather forecast was dreadful i decided against going away this weekend the weather forecast was dread the weather forecast was dreadful is what is a reason for the subject to decide against going away this weekend okay so before that reason we have our colon right in front of it now the, the third usage of the colon using colon after introductory headings introductory headings cooking time about five minutes cooking time about five minutes look at the next one start time 10 o'clock start time 10 o'clock number four now using colon between two main clauses using colon between two main clauses two main clauses that are connected very very important two main clauses that are what connected look at these clauses there in our example down here it made me feel claustrophobic i wonder what would happen to someone who was really unable to tolerate being locked into such a tiny space now these are our first clause and the second one okay now you will discover that the two clauses are well connected it made me feel claustrophobic i wonder what would happen to someone who was really unable to tolerate being locked into such a tiny space so you can see while introducing the next clause which is connected with the first one we have our what our colon right here okay who was really unable to tolerate being locked into such a tiny space it also has to do with what will happen to the person and that's what made the writer or the subject to feel claustrophobic look at the next one be patient the next book in the series has not yet been published be patient is also introducing the next word clause they are both connected you need to understand that the two clauses are what connected and so they are connected through the use of words our colon right here okay let's look at the next one using colon in front of the second part of a book title second part of a book title look at it farming and wildlife this will be the book title and then the second part of the book title a study in compromise have you seen something like that before farming and wildlife a study in compromise look at another one beyond single words this will be the title and then the second part of the book title the most frequent collocations in spoken english all right let's look at the next one using colon to introduce direct speech a direct speech now look at this he said you owe me three dollars and 25 cents we are using our colon right here to introduce this direct speech okay the next one the health minister said you can see our colon right here introducing the direct speech the it program will provide access to more comprehensive information okay so this is one also very very important a very important usage of the colon number seven now using colon to introduce other texts now why we most commonly use colons to introduce lists colons used to introduce what lists there are also instances in which they can be used to introduce words phrases clauses or even multiple sentences that help explain or illustrate the previous clause okay now look at this example one thing is for sure 
we aren't going to get a better deal than the one they off they are offering today one thing is for sure that's the first clause and it's not introducing other words or phrases we aren't going to get a better deal than the one they are offering today so what we are trying to say is that the colon is used commonly to introduce lists quite all right but they are also be, they can also be used to introduce words phrases and clauses just as we have in this example now let's look at the next example now let's get something straight we are not an equal level i'm the boss and you're an employee of this company so what i say is final let's get something straight this one right here the colon right here is not introducing other text introducing a sentence multiple sentences we have like two three sentences here we are not an equal at an equal level that's one i'm the boss that's two and you are an employee of this company that's three so what i say is fine and that's another one so you can see the colon right here doing the duty of introducing other words all right now you need to note these things spaces after the colon spaces after the colon Whenever we use a colon, it will be followed by a single space, a single space before the list or other information. In other words, always use just one space after a colon. You are making use of a colon. Let's go back to our previous example. Let's see. You can see I'm making use of a colon right here. There is a single space right here. You don't join your colon with other letters when writing. So there must be what? A single space whenever you are using a colon. So you watch out for that. It will be followed by a single space. Very, very important. Except when you are writing times, ratios, or citations. Take for example, you want to write 314 in a digital time. You write 3. No need for space 314. You can join them together. Or when you're writing 5 ratio 3. 5 ratio 3. You can see you see also make use of what? The colon. There is no need for space in this one when you are writing. Okay? So only when you're writing times, ratio, or citations, these three things. You don't use a space after your colon. But aside that, whenever you're using a colon, it's very when it has to do with letters. It must when it has to do with introducing words, uh list and information. There must be a space in front. Now let's look at the second one now. A semicolon. The semicolon. The semicolon, or it can be written as this or this, is a symbol commonly used between two closely related independent clauses. Two closely related independent clauses, provided they are not already joined by a coordinating conjunction. When these two closely related independent clauses are not joined by a coordinating conjunction, there is the need for the semicolon. The semicolon is often described as being more powerful than a comma. Being more powerful than a comma. Although semicolons function in a way similar to both commas and periods. I, I believe you remember period. That's full stop. And we've also gone through commas before. Yeah. So the way we use the semicolon is a little bit similar to the way the comma and the period is being used or are being used they do not have the exact function of either they are stronger than a comma but weaker than a period that is the semicolon is stronger than a comma but weaker than the full stop all right now it is not always appropriate to substitute one for the other so you need to understand the usage of each of these punctuation marks 
The way we use comma is different from the way we use semicolon. The way we use full stop is different from the way we use semicolon. Though they have a similar function, but you cannot substitute them for the other. All right. Now let's look at the use of the semicolon. The semicolon is used to mark a break between two main clauses when there is a balance or a contrast between the clauses. When there is a balance or a contrast between the clauses. Let's look at this example. The engine roared into life. The propellers began to turn. The plane tagged it down the runway ready for takeoff. Now, look at where we have our semicolon. We have one here and we have another one here. The engine roared into life. The propellers began to turn. The plane tags it down the runway ready to for takeoff. Alright? Now, there is a balance. And there is a contrast as well. The engine roared into life. The propellers began to turn. That's a balance. The plane tags it down the runway. We are, you can see there is a balance in, in between the clauses. There is a link between the clauses as well. Okay? That is the use of the semicolon. When are we to use a semicolon? One way to know when to use a semicolon is to ask yourself whether the two clauses could be written as separate sentences. You are using a semicolon to link two clauses together. How then do you know that ah, I need to use a semicolon right here? You need to look at it very well. Ask yourself if those two clauses can be written as a separate sentences. If the answer is yes, then you can use a semicolon. Let's look at this. You need to know that it is quite acceptable to use a full stop in these cases. Yes, but a semicolon is preferable if you wish to convey the sense of a link or continuity between the clauses in your piece of writing. Okay? It's very important if the two clauses could be written as separate sentences. Quite alright. But it's quite acceptable to use a semicolon. Very, very preferable. That is if you are conveying a kind of link in between the two clauses or a kind of continuity. Alright? Let's look at this. I'm not that interested in jazz. I prefer classical music. There is a link between the two clauses. Quite alright, they can be written separately. But in this case, there is a kind of link, a continuity. The two clauses are being linked together with the use of these semicolon. Alright? He knew everything about me. I had never even heard of him. There is a link between the two. And that's why we have the use of our semicolon. Now, when are we to use a semicolon? Semicolon is also used to separate items in a list. Get it right. Colon is used a word to introduce items or to introduce lists. But this one is used to separate items in a list, especially if the listed items are phrases or clauses, which may already contain commas. Okay? Look at this example. The, the holiday was a disaster. See our colon? Introducing a list. The flight was four hours late. The hotel, which was described as luxury, was dirty and it rained all through the night. Now, we have our colon here introducing a list. In other words, we also have our what? Our semicolon creating a link between the clauses, the sentences. Alright? The flight was four hours late. The hotel, which was described as luxury, was dirty. And it's rained all through the night. So you can see the use of the two punctuation mark right here. Now, do not use semicolons with independent clauses. Do not use semicolons with dependent clauses. Due to the fact that dependent clauses rely on independent clauses to make sense, the link between them must be expressed by either a comma 
the link between what a a, a dependent clause and an independent clause must be expressed by what either a comma that is if the dependent clause is used at the beginning of a sentence or don't bother to use punctuation at all no punctuation is expected there at all if a dependent clause comes after an independent clause and does not require a pause now look at this let me explain with my example whenever i trade to paris i always stay in the same hotel whenever i travel to paris i always stay in the same hotel now we see our comma here whenever i travel to paris is a dependent clause depending on what this independent clause that stands on its own i always stay in the same hotel all right so it's correctly used better to use a comma here whenever i travel to paris using a semicolon here is incorrect and that's how i mark this correct i'll mark this incorrect all right now we have seen the uses of the colon and the semicolon you may want to study further you go through these references and you can always get more of the use of the punctuation marks all right we are going to look at this assignment which you are going to do state two uses of the semicolon use the semicolon appropriately in two sentences then you state two uses of the colon as well and use the colon appropriately in two sentences you submit your answer to the following email make sure that there is no error when you are copying it out it's very very clear right here all right it's wonderful to have you in this class today and see you in this class.